and animation by Devrin Blessed. It's your mock-up radio show for cartoon topics, animation topics, and animator interviews. It's Devrin's Radio. Welcome to the show. We are here with our sixth guest, Kevin Hogan. He is an artist, animator, and art vlogger. So how are you doing today, Kevin? I'm doing great today, Devrin. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Still recovering from a cold, though. I'm sorry to hear that. It's all right. So I want to start off telling everyone that Kevin Short, The Hand, animated short, won an award at the Metro Film and TV Awards. He's got a laurel for it, too. And I definitely want to congratulate Kevin for the win. So, Kevin, how does it feel winning a film festival award for your animation? Oh, it's it's really cool. Um, it's something that I've really wanted to do for a long time to uh, have my films shown uh, throughout the world. Uh, winning in and of itself uh, hasn't really been a goal, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, the best part I think about that is that they they recognized what I was trying to do in that short. Uh, I was trying to animate in Microsoft Paint and still do something that was kind of uh, elegant and beautiful. And uh, if, if I don't know if you've ever animated in Paint, but it's definitely not easy to make really elegant animation in there. So uh, they they saw it as an experimental work that was working in that kind of um, that realm, and uh, that's what I won the award for. So that that's the best part that they kind of recognize what I was trying to do. Uh, artist-wise, in making that particular film. Yeah, that's really cool. You made it in MS Paint, and you won an award for it, which is really awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you. Anytime. So where do you see yourself going with your animation career in the future? I would like my animation to get into larger and larger circles, and I, I do want to start experimenting a little bit more with uh, with more intense animation programs that might give me a little bit more flexibility. Uh, right now, I, I'm using mostly freeware stuff because I like, uh, I do like working with things that are very basic and trying to make something uh, really interesting and complex with them. However, at a certain point, I do think you kind of uh, take that as far as you can. And so what I'd really like to do is to maybe start using more complex programs to uh, do more refined animation and to get into larger and larger festivals, maybe uh, more and more viewers on YouTube and eventually do distribution through uh, various channels and streaming devices. That's what I really like to get to eventually. Yeah, that would be good because it looks like you're off to a pretty good start here. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, to be as diverse with the kind of animation that I'm doing and also uh, in incorporate my love for art. And so that's what I've been trying to do on like YouTube and even in my animation. And I, I think it's going OK. Uh, we're slowly building up our subscribers and viewers. So it's, it's going pretty well. Nice. Now, I want to talk about your vlog series, what you used to call Art Smart. I was checking out this series, and as an artist myself also, I've been learning new things with your vlog series, like the one you did about how gold is eye-catching from historic art to the Legend of Zelda cartridge. <laughs> yeah. I, I, when I was, when I called my uh, channel uh, Art Smart, what I wanted to do was start with very uh, basic things that most people kind of are aware of in the culture and show how it has touch points and relevance to art history. I think a lot of people take fine art as being this uh, very uh, kind of just for rich people. It's up on these walls and these uh, really expensive galleries and things. And so uh, most people, I think, don't feel that they have much of a touch point with historical fine art. Uh, while it, it, that's not really true, it's pervasive in our culture. A lot of the things that start in fine art become popular art. And so that's what I was trying to do there. And I, I think that I've, I did a, I did kind of what I wanted to do. I was able to build up a little bit of a fan base, and I was able to touch a lot of people that I think didn't uh, have much interest in fine art. Um, but as time was going along, I was becoming more and more interested in just my first love, which is animation. And so uh, as I've become more interested in animation and doing animation, I've kind of changed 
the focus of my channel a bit. The fine art is still there, and I still probably every three or four videos do a fine art video. But uh, I'm focusing more and more now on animation. It's just my first love. Yeah, it's really nice, you know, art and animation both. They're really awesome to do. I mean, if you ever checked out my website, you'd see I did both artwork and animation, plus photography and graphic design. I did. Yeah. It's I think it's and I think people have a tendency to think that all of these things are separate from one another, and they're really not. They all uh, kind of flow into one another. Uh, one art form influences another. I, I know that the great Disney artists, uh, most of them had a love for uh, for historical fine art, and they love that. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that are influenced by photography now, especially black and white photography and uh, the effects that you can get. And that kind of photography has really inspired a lot of the um, the more recent animation that's independent style animation. I, I, I think all of these things flow into one another. It's just making sure that people can see those historical touch points and how they connect to today. And I, I think it's cool that you're touching on that on your website, too. Yeah, it does make sense to me that animation can be an art form, too. Oh, absolutely. And it it's a fantastic way for people to express themselves and to uh, explore uh, not just reality, but our, our psyche. It also uh, allows us to um, do things that are more abstract. It, it's it's just it's a fantastically useful art form that I think people have a tendency to think is just for kids. You know, they look at like Saturday morning cartoons and they think that's what animation is. And it's not. It, it is a fantastic expressive form of art that's just kind of been overlooked, I think. Um, so I, I think it's really great that there are other people out there like yourself that try to uh, to use animation in a more expressive way. I really enjoy the fact that your art uh, seems to really touch on uh, kind of modern day adult subject matter, and it's it's not just in the family guy, you know, fart jokes kind of thing. Uh, you really do seem to touch on actual um, subjects and a real satire from uh, adult life, and I and I think that that's great. And more animators should really touch on that kind of thing. Thank you very much. So as far as the vlogs you did about animation. It was really awesome that you taught us about early animation, such as Gertie the Dinosaur and Phantasmagory, animation before film, and even the silhouette animator Lonnie Reiniger, to even animated movie reviews. Oh, the, yeah, touching on early animation is something that I think has been really overlooked and neglected uh, historically by both uh, people that are interested in silent film and also by people that are interested in animation. I think uh, it's it's the foundation of animation. And uh, while a lot of the early animated films may not be the greatest films that were ever made, uh, they really are a foundation. And there was a lot of artistry and experimentation going on at that point. And uh, for whatever reason, it's kind of been overlooked. So I've tried to make sure on my channel that I point out those beginning phases of animation and uh, how how some of those things continue to be done today. Uh, a lot of animation that is being done on the internet now is very similar to the kind of stuff that you see in silent film animation. A lot of uh, people making inanimate objects come to life, uh, people interacting with an animated drawing, uh, live action and animation combinations. These are things that are being done quite a bit now on places like YouTube, and we think that we're being really innovative. But if you look back into the silent film era, a lot of this stuff was already being done, you know, well over 100 years ago. And so uh, I've tried to hit on that. Honestly, I wish I wish that part of the website would have gotten a little bit more uh viewers and, and things, because uh, it, it just seems to be an, an, a subject that doesn't interest people, but it's uh, it, it shouldn't be. It, it should be something that more people are interested in. So hopefully more and more people will catch those videos. Definitely. Historical film can be definitely worth watching. Mm. Yeah. And 
a lot of them are really quite innovative uh, for those early shorts. Uh, they had very, very limited technology and the things that they were able to do uh, was really fantastic. I mean, not uh, everything during the silent era was great, but uh, there was quite a few great ones in Gertie the Dinosaur. Uh, they were not able to duplicate the character animation they did in that particular short for 20, almost 30 years. Uh, it was a fantastic early film that just kind of seems to come out of nowhere. And it, then it just took decades for people to figure out what Windsor McKay did, you know? Uh, so more and more people should be interested in silent film uh, animation. I really on the live action and on the animation side, but just for whatever reason, it's just kind of fallen to the wayside. Yeah, and the good news is that it's 2019, and the film from 1923 are now in public domain, and the earlier stuff already is. Oh, there's a bunch of them. I've been hoping to maybe do some uh, commentaries on some of those 1923 shorts. It's just finding time to do it at this point, you know. Uh, but I think it's great, and uh, people can use that as the basis for uh, for new ideas. I think public domain is something that more people should be tapping into uh, because most people need a, a touch point before they start creating something new and original. And so uh, if they can uh, look at some of these older films and use them as uh, some in inspiration for, for things that they're doing now, I think people can make some really interesting art. Definitely. I see you do your own art too, like what is seen on your Facebook page and in your art smart title video. What can you describe about your art? Um, well, I think my art is, well, really that's, there's kind of just two major uh, themes that go through my art. One, I love drawing. I love, uh, I, I love making something through my hand and uh, being able to uh, create something uh, through the pencil or pen or, or something that is uh, based upon the line. Um, I'm not as interested in paint personally. I like I like the line and uh, being able to manipulate it in order to make art. So that's one major theme. Um, I think the other major theme in my art is honestly just making art out of garbage. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I I like seeing something that was not made to be turned into art, turned into art, and uh, see, seeing the potential of an object for what it can be as opposed to what it already is. Um, and so a lot of art that I've made has been either through garbage that I've kind of uh, recycled into something, or uh, a lot of times my drawings and things are using the most basic materials. Uh, I like to use just whatever sitting around. Um, I've made art out of crayons, you know, just regular uh, Crayola crayons. Uh, I think that's also part of what draws me to using like Microsoft Paint on my computer uh, because it's just a basic program that most people think is, you know, you just do a quick thing in there and it's not, it's not a real work of art, but I try to use it and make something out of it. So I, I like to use things that are basically garbage or kind of thrown away, forgotten things, and turn it into something that is a little bit more substantial. I think those are the two major driving forces behind my current art. Yeah, for pencil, it's cool that you can correct a race and the lines disappear after you shade them or color them. Absolutely. I also just like the fact that with a drawing, I, I like sometimes seeing the those kind of smudges and those original marks of what you did. I, I'm not t I'm not super refined in my art. Uh, I don't do lots and lots of of uh, drafts or anything. Uh, mine is kind of is what it is. So sometimes you can see just these little faint hints of the earlier mistake in it, and uh, I I think that the the process is just as interesting as the final piece. Um, it does limit uh, the amount of people that like my art sometimes. Some people don't like seeing those earlier things. They want it to just be super refined. Um, but I, I kind of like that. I like seeing the process, and I like the simplicity of just a basic drawing that I'm figuring out as I go, and then it stands as its own work of art. Uh, I think historically, um, artwork has been 
p people tend to look at preparatory works as not really a work of art in, a, in and of itself. And it's only been in recent times that we've become interested in keeping those things around. Um, a lot of famous artists would just throw away their preparatory drawings. I kind of like the preparatory drawing being artwork itself and letting it just kind of stand on its own. That's kind of what I like to do. You can show how you've grown over time. Exactly. And again, like just, you know, making a mistake is part of art and, and or going, ah, you know what, I can make this better. And sometimes you can still see those little smudge lines or the faintest hint of something that used to uh, be there that you've kind of gone over. And uh, I personally find that interesting, that the process of art, uh, it's not always the final piece. It's the journey to what you end up with that is interesting. So that's what I like to do. Yeah, that really is good. So anyway, that's the episode with Kevin Hogan. Be sure to check him out on his channel, Animated Talk with Kevin Hogan, and check him out on Facebook. And you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I want to thank Kevin Hogan for being on the show. Thank you too, Devon. I appreciate it. This is Devon Bliss signing out, and I'll tune in again with another topic.